Hey, if you're watching this now, you've probably already seen the joking, not joking fast tutorial. It really is that fast, but this one's going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more step by step of Tracky. So here's the iPad interface. I'm recording my room here. We got a big record button in the middle, autofocus on and off, uh, 30 and 60 frame toggle, microphone on and off. And then these white wireframes are the LiDAR trying to pick up tracking planes of my actual room. And it should do that automatically. If you click on them, you can add markers. If you want to, you know, position things, you can click them again to delete. And in the bottom left, there's a little garbage can for delete all. Hitting record, you get a timer in the top right. And that's basically it. When you're done recording, it'll spit out files. And then you can, on a Mac, airdrop them. On a PC, I use just Google Drive and share them with my computer. And the four files are these. You got your main video. You have a depth video. The camera.bren is the, like, intrinsics file that we make and then segmentation for hands and bodies and silhouettes and things. So the depth file looks exactly what you'd think. Um, obviously our video looks just like we saw. My messy craft desk there. And the segmentation, this one didn't have any hands, so you won't see anything, but as an example, here's a different clip with a hand in it. Um, you'll notice it's pretty low resolution. This is out of Apple. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really do anything about that, except in compositing, we can smooth and feather it. And we'll, we'll show you that in a second. In Blender over here, uh, I'm just going to delete my default view, edit, preferences, install the add-on if you haven't installed it already. Here's a big install button at the top, the, uh, the Python file in the GitHub. I already have it. Just make sure that the check mark is checked. And you'll know if it works. File, import, tracky tracking data. This will actually show up. We're just gonna find our file here. There's some default import stuff. The defaults are fine. Like it's designed to be as click free as possible here. Um, and we'll just play the animation and you'll see the camera's moving around. You'll see it has keyframes. You'll see it lines up. We already pre-aligned the uh, video to background images. So that should be all set up for you automatically. And you'll also see the tracking planes that we had, you know, originally. Uh, there's an empty, and you can rotate the whole scene if you did want to just kind of align it. This is also something Apple does arbitrarily, like the orientation of this room. It doesn't know what, you know, north and south and x and y are, so uh, you might have to align it if you want it on the grid. But uh, we can just make some geometry here. Here's a cube. We'll make it smaller. Control-Shift-Tab for snap. Snap it to the tracking plane. That's great. Maybe we'll move it kind of over here a bit. Um, and if you hit render, F12, and it automatically composites. That's awesome. So the compositing is really basic. I'll turn off the backdrop. Um, basically, we have our render file with the alpha, and we have the movie clip, which is the movie clip, and it automatically rotates for portrait and landscape mode, and also scales if you're using, you know, a, a scale percentage over here. So that'll automatically just work. And then alpha effectively goes through the mix node into the end. One extra complication we have is our uh, segmentation zone here. Again, this particular clip is black, but if it had a hand or a body or whatever, it would go through this flow. And you have some scales and uh, blurs and, and different feathering options for how you want the occlusion outline to work. So if you had a hand that was in front of your 3D object, it would automatically occlude that render. Um, and that goes through that multiply, which mixes the alpha with it. And then you can turn on uh, using this factor 0 and 1, on and off, um, and pretty basic. And that's the uh, the crux of it. If you want to uh, improve your shadow catching, so by default we have we import all of these tracking planes into this one kind of folder here, um, and we can turn on the rendering. By default they're all turned off, so they show up in the viewport, but they don't show up in the render. Uh, and then in cycles only, not EV, there's an option for shadow catcher here. And we're just going to turn on camera, diffuse, and glossy so we can see it. And you can see already we've got a little bit of shadow going here, but we can improve this even more by just approximating our lamp in the real world. So it's a little bit warm. Maybe it's 40 or 50 watts. Yeah, you can already see the, the shadow kind of pulling over here. Uh, if we go to this side, you can see it better. Bit of shadow. Um, again, we're turning on the uh, visualization for render, and then shadow catcher and the ray visibility to see it. Um, you can add a material if you want. Uh, it will modify, like particularly if this cube was reflective or something. If we give it a material, um, 
then it would see like a black floor as opposed to a white floor or a non-material floor. Um, so if you're if you're wanting to tweak some of the kind of interactions between these two planes, even though it's a shadow catcher and even though it's invisible, you do want to give it a material and, and make it sort of approximate uh, what the actual like video floor material is. Um, yeah, we can just kind of duplicate this again. Maybe this is an area light. We'll make it pink just to kind of get some of that over here. Let's make him darker. So you can start to see how that just kind of works. Do another render. Yeah, and that looks pretty good for five seconds of effort. Obviously, this is the part where you would really dial in your materials and lighting and everything, but um, Control F12 is your animation, and the animations automatically, A, use MP4, and spit out in the folder that you opened the file from. So um, in this particular case, it would just be here, and it would go next to all of these. So that's super easy, super clean. Uh, really, really, we've tried to default and automate as much as you would want out of this process. But at the end of the day, it's still just Blender. You can still, you know, fiddle with it as much as you want. There's still just regular geometry and regular file types. If you want to render to frames, you know, render to frames, great, whatever. Um, you can use Eevee, like Eevee's totally fine. It just won't have the shadow catcher aspects. Or you have to set up your own kind of quasi shadow catcher material on the floor. But uh, yeah, that's uh, really as easy as it is. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for trying our tool.